Welcome back to our sessions on miracles. So we're going to take a slight change in direction from now on. As well as having miracle stories, we're going to start thinking about what we need to process when it comes to the topic of miracles. And this morning's question is this, is there a danger in focusing on miracle stories? I'll get to that in a moment, but first of all, let me tell you another miracle story. This one comes from this man, the life of Francis Schaeffer, not in this book, although this is a very good book about his life. Francis Schaeffer was one of the most respected Christians of the 20th century. He was an apologist, which meant that he was very good at explaining the faith to people. When he was young and he had a young family, they found themselves in a little bit of a crisis. For a short period of time, a period of about a year, they needed to have accommodation. The problem was that they had no money. Francis was praying and he asked God, where, Lord, are we going to live? Please show us. Immediately he heard an audible voice that said, Uncle Harrison's house. Uncle Harrison had never given the Schaefer family anything and was very unlikely to let them use his house for a year. But because the voice was so startling, he decided he would have to write to Uncle Harrison asking what he planned to do with his house for the next year. To his amazement, the Uncle Harrison replied in a letter saying that he was planning to live with his brother for the next year and would be happy for the Schaefers to live in his house rent-free. That event strengthens the Schaefer family. And they said it was a pivotal moment in their ministry. Often when times were hard, Schaefer would look back to that time when God had spoken to him so clearly. What are miracles? Well, in the Bible, we get three different ideas for miracles. We get the idea of a sign pointing to something else. We get the idea of a wonder, someone amazed. It's something that causes people to be amazed at what God has done. And you get a word that's translated either miracle or mighty work, and it's an unusual act of power. In this very helpful little book by Tim Chester, this is what he describes miracles as. Amazing acts of power through which God reveals his glory and rescues his people. But is there a danger on doing what we're doing in these sessions by focusing on miracles? Absolutely, there is a danger. The danger is that we so focus on miracles that we forget to see God either in the ordinary or we forget to see the amazing things that God does that, that we don't consider miracles. For example, I have heard credible reports in books of people being raised from the dead in other parts of the world. I don't doubt that they've taken place. But you know there's something more extraordinary, something more marvellous than someone being raised from physical death? And that is that every time someone is born again, when they become a Christian, they are raised from spiritual death and given spiritual life that's not just for this short period of time on earth, but forever. Don't be so focusing on miracles that you lose your sense of the general mission of God. Or in Psalm 136, the psalmist praises God whose love endures forever. In verses 1 to 4, he praises God who does great works. And then he lists miracles. 5 to 9, verses 5 to 9, creation of earth and stars. 10 to 16, miracles related to the exodus from Egypt. Verses 17 to 24, the defeat of the Canaanite kings at the time of the conquest. All wonderful, amazing things. And then verse 25, simply this, gives food to every creature. That too is a wonder that God feeds every creature every day. 
when we finish this session today, I want you to spend some time today thinking about the ordinary ways that God works. The things that we might be tempted not to see as spectacular or miraculous. The fact that he has brought you to faith in him is the biggest miracle ever, the most important thing for your life. The fact that he feeds you every day, too, is a wonder. Spend time thanking him for what we consider the ordinary blessings that come from the hand of God. The strange thing is that both the people who are sceptical about miracles and those who may be a bit naive and see a miracle in everything, in some ways they both have the same problem. They have made God too small. The sceptical person doesn't think that God can do things that seem extraordinary. They doubt God's ability to work outside the normal. But the person who sees a miracle under every bush also has a danger of making God too small, because by focusing only on the miracles, they can forget to see that God is involved in the everyday as well. They can take their focus off the everyday blessings and miracles of God, the everyday wonders of a God who even feeds us. I want to finish with one of my favourite miracle stories. It comes from this book here, Reese Howell, The Intercessor, a very uh, exciting book to read. He, Reese Howell talks about a time, he lived, by the way, 1879 to 1950. He talks about going to visit his uncle Dick. Now, Dick was someone who had been invalid, couldn't walk. He hadn't walked for 30 years. And yet one day, as he... As he was praying, Reese Howell felt the Holy Spirit say to him that he was going to heal Uncle Dick. Reese thought this was too good to be true, but he trusted what God was saying. Anyway, he went and visited his Uncle Dick, and his Uncle Dick greeted him, saying, Anything new from the Lord? He explained, Reese did, to his uncle that he believed that God was going to heal him. His uncle needed some time to take this in, so he went out to the garden to pray for a while and then came back and said, Yes, I believe I will be healed in four and a half months on the 15th of May. News spread that Reese's uncle was going to be healed. But just a few weeks before the 15th of May, Reese had to go away for a few months. He would not be there at the time. He went to his uncle to explain that he wouldn't be back until after his uncle had been healed. And his uncle explained to him that God had said that he would be healed at 5 a.m. in the morning and that he would go to the chapel that was the nonconformist, the independent church that day because it would be a Sunday, the 15th of May. Well, on the night before the healing, the night of the 14th moving into the 15th, as usual, um, Uncle Dick uh, was up between one and two, restless or whatever. But when he went back to bed, he fell into a deep sleep. And the next thing he was aware of was the clock chiming for five in the morning. He woke and he could walk. He was perfectly healed. His family were struck with awe. He went that day to the church and it was a day of great thanksgiving. See you next week.